Hi loves. It is I yet again, like just a fixin. Although it's been some time, but I'm not wearing the same clothes. How dare you? <laughs> Sorry, it's been a long day. And I'm trying to make sure my cat doesn't uh, decide to pop up here again, even though she's right here. Like this, this is all her. That's all her. Just stay right there, honey. All right, let's uh, go ahead. And we are watching, we are watching the demonic world of Disney PS1 games. I'm not ready for this. I don't know what to expect with it. Thank you. I have no idea what to expect with it. But I do want to thank Tanner Majors for requesting this one as well. So yeah, without further ado. <sighs> there goes his head. Kitty, you see please. My shoes? They're not answering my texts. <gasps> Caddy, are you grooming? Yeah, yeah. Thought so. No, I can't. I... Um. How about? Why did I do that? I'm sorry. Okay. Kitty cat, I love you. Disney, Disney, dig up. Honey, I love you. I don't know what's, what you're doing to my laptop, though. Try this again. Okay, there we go. <gasps> Caddy, are you grooming? Yeah. <gasps> Thought so. No, you didn't. I... Leave, but I have like 20 Disney games for the PlayStation. Oh my god! <coughs> Disney, Disney, dig up Disney. Oh no, don't do that. Disney, Disney, defrost Disney. Who's put on to Mickey Mouse? Who doesn't know those three round circles? Because there's other kinds of circles. I mean, you see them and immediately hey, you know Kim what they are and what they represent. They're more yep. popular than Good Morning Cat. Whatever your hmm. opinions on the Walter Disney Hello Kitty, are, also known scenario. The quality and impact of most of their movies. Ah, uh, yes. Classics line up. From Snow yes. White all the way to Chicken Little. They're all perfect and you will never be. Disney started with a single eight minute cartoon in 1928 and now they own the entire planet. <laughs> But they do. Movies, one thing in particular doesn't get discussed all that often. They're video games. And no, I'm not talking about Kingdom Hearts. And this is a huge shame because there are some great ones out there, especially for the biggest console available during Disney's height of popularity in their own renaissance, the PS1. And I'm not talking about the Pixar Disney games that are remembered more fondly. Nah, I'm talking about the old school, original Disney animation only. And, in fact, back in the ugly deep pause of my past, I looked at a few of these on this channel. I don't recommend you going back to these videos at all, I was in a dark place, but for a reason, <laughs> a few of these PS1 Disney games have surprised me, such as Donald oh. Duck's Quack Attack, or as I like to call it, Quack Bandicoot. It's a fun enough platforming game where you control Ronald Ruckus as you run and jump through tricky levels, collect milkshakes to make Donald piss himself, and pick up long wooden sticks to shove up Donald's <laughs> And who can forget the Jungle Book Groove Party? I did. It's Dance Dance Revolution, but you get to play as Baloo the Bear, and Lou Bega is in it. Oh. Looking like he wants to traffic me. But with the good mostly came the bad, leading to forgotten messes. Such mm -hmm. as the tars I remember and that. A platformer where you play as a noseless butternut squash having a dance with a killer leopard, and every jump and attack is delayed. You have a knife that is absolutely useless against anything except for other humans because this game is rated for three to ten fatal stabbings. And whenever you press circle, Tarzan has post traumatic flashbacks to his days in the Korean War. <laughs> then there's Aladdin in Nazira's Revenge. Who's Nazira? A woman. And this game sucks too, with a horrid camera, stiff controls, combat that's slower than extracting oil, carpet riding that has checkpoints that spawn you directly into pillars, Checkpoint. Aladdin running around with cleavage on his back, and Princess Jasmine on a skateboard. Excuse you? makes me feel like I've been touched in my bad place. I can show you my 
Pirates. And who can forget Simba's mighty adventure based off of The Loin King, where you play through a load of beige scenes from the movie while Timon leaves his browser history open. Bumper, try to sit on me. And Mufasa still talks to you even after being killed in a stampede. You must learn the delicate balance of the circle of life. Terrible controls that feel like you're driving Simba instead of moving him. A raw attack that simply doesn't work. Sometimes you can pull yourself up ledges and sometimes you can't. And help me, Uncle Scar! I got stuck in the wall! <laughs> and there's a party time with Winnie the Dump. A Mario Party rip-off where you pick up fruit, drive around in circles for three hours, pour right. unlimited bananas from the back of your feet, and the game doesn't let you play as Eeyore because everyone left him behind in the Wicker Man. And who can forget the worst name for a game of all time? Disney's action game featuring Hercules. One of the prettiest PS1 games you could get at oh. the time, but also one of the hardest to control and even see what you're doing. What can you stand on? Who can hurt you? Who's just in the background? Where did that come from? Are you an enemy or a friend? How did they get the real life Danny DeVito into a character model? But these hey. 20 other ones here? Never played them before. Oh. Fun for all. Now I can't because I broke them all. And get ready to join in with everyone's favorite Disney character. Mickey Mouse, as we take a look at the first game, Lilo and Running Tramp. Okay, fine. that's such an underrated yes, movie. A video on this game too, but Christ alive, that was nearly ten years ago. I was seventeen. Don't watch that. No, I'm picking flowers. Isn't that cute? <laughs> it's disgusting. I'm disgusting, and if you like it, you're a predator. If you're British, enjoy this weather. Enjoy this, enjoy this weather. Anyway, I'm done waiting. I'm not a bus passenger so let's take a quick revisit to lilo and stitch trouble in what am i going to expect here then um a whole Exciting. hula hula well you should have said earlier oh my favorite disney interspecies relationships well so far i'm pretty confused where's the trouble here lilo looks pretty happy and stitch is sitting around waiting to be serviced oh all right there's the trouble it's on the disc Lilo's gonna drown. Hey, I'm doing? I've been better! Well, let's check this out. I found a gallery in the main menu. And that's my favorite place because it lets us watch a scene where Princess Jasmine seriously considers sleeping with a dog. And then thinks about sleeping with Stitch instead. Hello, my name is Reg Cheesy. Welcome to your paradise getaway for the week. Hold on. What's that legit? Like... I'm sorry, I don't rewind normally. It's my favorite place because it lets us watch a scene where Princess Jasmine seriously considers sleeping with a dog. And then thinks about sleeping with Stitch instead. Hello, my name is... Are you... <laughs> not, not, not his uh, commentary on that, but just the fact that she made those eyes at him. Why? He's like... I don't know if he's old, young, I don't remember. A anyways. Reg Cheesy. Anyways, your paradise gets Thank you, Rest Cheesy. Hawaii, mm -hmm. world famous for its beautiful volcanoes, luscious greenery, towering ocean waves, Nana. and f human fish. What the hell did they do to Nani here? She looks like a stick of celery. <laughs> Yeah, I walked forward. Ah, oh, okay, I'm starting to remember this okay. now. This is a Crash Bandicoot clone. And back then on my first video, I must have had a bad case of AVGN-itis just looking for things to complain about because, to be honest, I think this is a good entry-level Crash game. It controls really well, the music is really catchy and relaxing, Lilo can handle volatile explosives, it's great for kids. She can also do a move called a bum bash, which is simply unacceptable. What did homeless people ever do to her? So let's rename it to something totally innocent that I think everyone can get behind. The clunge drop. And you may think that sounds a bit disgusting, but hey, I'm not the one that programmed a wispy fart cloud to come out every time you use it. The levels here aren't too badly made, especially for a kid's game. There's plenty of enemies and obstacles, tight life or death platforming, and giant sentient rock monsters that just live in the town throwing fireballs at everyone. It's a good thing I can beat them with my broom. But how does one protect themselves in this beautiful forest full of man-eating plants and pigs? <laughs> Why? By using... Voodoo, of course. I'm well, sorry. A choice for a little Hawaiian girl. Black magic. And it must be pretty powerful stuff since it gives Lilo the greatest special attack of all time. Summoning a giant pink man to sit on you. And if you think that's bad, you also get to control Stitch in this game, and he has his own unique levels where he comes across the worst obstacles imaginable. Giant stone blocks of himself. Stitch can do everything Lilo does, but also a gross spit attack that looks as wet as I feel, and a spin attack just like Rayman. He can't attack women though. Stitch is woke. You can't forget to mention the biggest difference between him and Lilo though his coffee meter, or as my 17 year old self called it. Stitch also has an ape shitter meter. 
Yeah, that's what the manual says. Yeah, that's what the manual says. When he collects enough coffee, Stitch gets up on his hind legs and comes for you. But that's not all that happens. <laughs> Come on, get <Gatboy! laughs> Because once you do that, you can roll into a ball and become totally invincible for a few seconds. The game even teaches you how to cope with real life problems, such as how to deal with bullies. No. By challenging them to a race and forcing them to drive into TNT. <laughs> but yeah, I haven't got much to complain about here, aside from the bosses, if you can even call them that. So well done, Lilo and Stitch, Trouble and Phil Collins. You're a new, underrated PS1 kids game classic, right next to Stuart Little 2. Aha! Bonjour, small person! It's me, your favorite ah. man who leaves his hair in your soup sandwich! Hi, sandwich! <laughs> and today, we are cooking... Rats with help from my new recipe book, My Disney Kitchen. Whoops. My book is flat. Yes, My Disney Kitchen, which on its own sounds like a total nightmare right out of the gate. What does it mean if your kitchen is a Disney kitchen? Oh, believe it or not, this PS1 game was exclusive to Japan. I'm not ready for America. that. The UK never got it. But that's probably because the only cuisine we have are room temperature water and mushy peas. However, I do so happen to have a region 3 hacked PS2, so I have no excuses. Let's check it out. Just before we start, though, I need to say that the cover art is very problematic. If Stitch was so much of a feminist he couldn't even touch a woman, Mickey is the stark opposite. Minnie is the busy one, working the toaster, pouring the milk, flipping the pancakes and mixing the batter, while Mickey just sits there like a gluttonous bigot waiting to be fed. Oh, Mickey, are you happy with your orange juice? Make me a sandwich, bitch! Okay, here we go, my Disney kitchen. And the E in kitchen is slightly wonky, so we must be in for a crazy time. Oh, look, there's Minnie. And what a surprise, she's going for the cheese. Honestly, I didn't know what to think about anything going on here, so I left it too long on the title screen, which led me to a demo video. And the very first thing that popped up were the words heavy cream. <gasps> what an adorable house. I don't like this. Why are they looking inside my house? Is this the purge? Oh, Jesus H, Mother of Mary, you broke in. And their voices aren't right. We'd be happy to rent you the grocery store for you. <laughs> and we'd be happy to, to drop by. Oh, trying a bit of role play, are we? Well, why don't you pretend to tell me how your day went? And I pretend to care. Why is the toaster not plugged in? Why is the kitchen table photo realistic? Why are the words my Disney kitchen posted completely straight while the frame that they're on is at an angle? Why do I have a sensual Mickey portrait on the wall? Why is the mouse cursor so slow even with the speed button held down? Why is it even called a mouse when it doesn't look anything like Michael? Please. Just, just do it. Bye. Oh look, I found the fridge. And yes, I even found the world famous heavy, heavy cream. cream. But more disturbingly, the tomato puree was right next to it. This is starting to sound like a bad time of the month. So we can pick up any ingredients we want and put them down again. That's good. But what can I do with this pasta? What? What do you mean I can't put pasta in the teapot? This is my kitchen, and in my damn kitchen, we boil the shit out of lasagna in the kettle. Okay, fine. We'll do it properly then. Let's get Darn the it. pot, put in the pasta, and an orange, chocolate syrup, and a pickle. Brilliant. Supper will be ready in no time flat. All right. Unfortunately, though, you can't put ice cream in it. Because that's Shoot. going too far. There we go. It's all heated through. Time to put it on the table for Mickey and Minnie to eat. They'll be fine. Rats will eat anything. <gasps> oh, no. Rain. It's an omen. Why hey, don't Mickey and Minnie come and try my delicious slop? They told me to put things on the table to eat them, and I just put things on the table, you miserable bits. How dare you not try my cooking? I'm a master baker! Okay, so clearly, if you want to play this game, you need to have a basic understanding of cooking. This is not a free-for-all. This is not about having fun. It's a game for parents trying to turn their four-year-old into a housewife. You need to know what tools to use where, what ingredients go together, what to do with what ingredient in what order. If you like cooking, then congratulations, because that's all that this is. And okay. I hate it. It's far too much effort for me to go through to make fake food that I can't even eat. The, wait, what? I didn't want to open up a breakfast bar. I want the money. Ice family to eat my stew. This is Walt Disney, not Hell's Kitchen. The lamb sauce. Okay, game fine. If you won't try my food, I will. All right. I, I, I didn't mean it. I don't. I don't want to. try this. Why not? Okay. Are the noodles at least cooked? Okay, chocolate oranges oh, are very good. <laughs> I love you for that too. Uh -oh. 
Mistake. I was too busy learning how to domesticate my children with cooking lessons to remember that you need to plate up your meals before the mice will eat them. Silly me. Mickey, if you don't shut up, you're going in the curry. Well, I couldn't figure out how to put all of my other ingredients into a single bowl, so instead, you can have a pickle on a plate. I call it Le Pickle Platy. <laughs> and it comes with a knife when you want to end it all. Annoyingly though, even after all of this, they still don't want to eat my food. They refuse to go near a single lonely pickle without me putting actual food from the recipe book on the table first. Okay, fair enough, whatever. So I look up how to make a cake, head for the oven to make it, sort the batter out, bake it in the oven, and burn it. So now it looks like human waste. Let's put Donald's face on it. Yeah, there we go. Donald's dub. That cake looks quite interesting. <laughs> Eat up, kids. I'm sure you'll love it. <laughs> oh, this is delicious. <laughs> oh, boy. Just wait until Donald hears about the time we ate his feces. Hang on. <laughs> feces. Poo. Winnie the Poo. Hello. Ah. But how will I cover the medical expenses? Hello, I'm Spons. It killed him. Have you ever heard of a game called Genshin Impact? It's an open world yes. action RPG for your PC, iPhone, Android devices, PS4, and even PS5. But you don't have one of them, do you? Step no. into a sprawling magical world on the continent of Teyvat, where seven special elemental powers surge throughout, and you've got to do your best to make them bend around your whim. They have very kindly decided to sponsor my channel today, just in time for their version 2.0 update, including the new map, Imazuma Muza Muza Muzumu. Along with new characters, quests, weapons, items, stories, puzzles, and much more. The main quest itself has a plethora of travelers to pick from, all with their own stories to tell within these huge regions to explore. And there's so much goodness to take in, I can't handle it, and I usually pass out. Even better, if you're not up for a lonely quest all by your lonesome, once you reach adventure level 16, you even unlock a simultaneous four-player co-op mode that works across every system for every version of the game, allowing for even more elemental combat variety, more ways to explore, and more friends, because let's be real, you need some. You'd better head to the link in the description <laughs> and download the game, though, because they're updating it constantly, even some brand new characters to play with, including the new obtainable characters Yoimiya, a pyrotechnician with such a hairy back she can make plats out of it, and Sayu, a small ninja that either has a tail or is sitting on the comfiest beach bag I ever did see. And this I is all mean... inside the new Inazuma region with the second chapter of the Archon quest. New weapons to forge together for stronger weapons, new events that reward you constantly for taking part. Come on, you want to stay in the bathroom for a few more minutes too long, right? Then Genshin Impact is the game for you. Thanks again to Genshin Impact for sponsoring today's video and get the game in the description right now. He's still dead. I'm cold. <gasps> you okay? Where was I? Excuse me. Oh yes, Pooh. Did you know that Winnie the Pooh had a surprising amount of PlayStation titles? <gasps> but I do know that there was a point-and-click Winnie the Pooh education game for really young kids on the PlayStation. So let's jump on eBay and see what we can find. I can't afford these prices. I'm not a locksmith. Why in the free-range beef is this so much money? Would you rather take your kid to a private school or pay for Winnie the Pooh as a teacher? Because it more or less costs the same. Furthermore, it's not even in my language. I'm not paying £300 for Winnie the Pooh educativity. What other Disney <laughs> PS1 games can I look at instead? Oh. Apparently, one is a Disney game. But you forgot, didn't you? I've got a region free PS2. Ooh. So I can play Winnie the Pooh Kindergarten instead. Yay! Let's go on an adventure with Winnie the Pooh Kinder Eggs. Oh, bother. I just laid that. Well, I will say one thing about this title screen. Winnie can't wait to start going to school. You look exactly how I feel. We've got a menu here with lots of different <laughs> Winnie games to see. And I am not a fan at all of all this jittering. Why is the game doing this? I'm not trying to find out if my kids got epilepsy. I'm trying to make them spell yak. I need to get away from this right now. It's really hurting my eyes. So let's start off with Pooh's thoughtful spot. You might want to check that it isn't malignant. Move here to choose the sky and over here to choose the ground. Oh, okay. Understood. I'm basically God, and this is where God lives. Welcome to the forest of tar. Next up is Rue's number balloons, and this is where it starts getting hard. You click on the balloons to pop them, and then click on the number of balloons that you saw. Slow down! 
I, my tummy's having motions. You're the best balloon counter I know. How many do you know? Have you been having an affair? Let's check out Eeyore's mix and match. It's a music Ooh. game. You pick two instruments to mix together and have a toot. Xylophone and bagpipes together at last. <laughs> Tigger's treasure hunt. Here's a grid, here's a children's character that rhymes with a slur, and here's how far away you are from the treasure. Apparently, I'm only five spaces away, but Oof. <laughs> no matter which five spaces I take, uh -oh. I can never seem to uh -oh. find the right Oof. place to uh -oh. go. Oof. This is the easy mode. How am I doing this so wrong? Am I four? Oh, wait. Oh, hang on. Wait a second. That doesn't say five spaces. It says S for south. <laughs> Rabbit's shape sorting is next, and maybe we can help Christopher Robin with his homework. I think Rabbit has had a drink, and this, this is the hardest one yet. You've picked up the shapes and moved them to the same shapes. Hey, Gopher. Why? Gopher, what did you do? And the final mini game is Owl's Word Shop, where you match the correct words to the correct beginning letter, which is just as fun as you can imagine. But what's even better is the way that Owl says certain words. Zebra, goat, mouse, ah, orange. Oh my, my. I hope that goat doesn't eat poop. Yep, so do I. Okay, right. I can hear all of you right now from where I live. <laughs> Cags, this is the Dark Souls of education games. Isn't there an easier one for me? <laughs> Yes, there is. <laughs> yep. If Winnie the Pooh Kindergarten was too heavy for you, then you may want to check out Why? Winnie the Pooh Preschool. Why? Three, as in before school. Instead of a child eagerly learning their ABCs, we're a dumb toddler wandering around aimlessly while singing Tinky Winky did a stinky. If kindergarten was rated EC for early childhood, then this game should be re-rated to F for fetus. That's how young we're talking here. I can't wait to play with horse noise. I have never been to preschool, like... My mom never, 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 never even heard of preschool when my brothers and I were young. This is now young. So when I grew up and found out my sister-in-law had a, took her child to preschool, I was flabbergasted. Like the poo. <laughs> okay, actually, to be fair, this one is totally different from kindergarten. For starters, it has way more cartoon cutscenes in between each minigame. And there's an actual story you're working towards, the games are different, the main menu is different. So far, I actually prefer it. If you're a crinkler, you might enjoy this. Every minigame here gets an announcement, too. Tigger lives here. Kanga and Roo live here. Piglet's house. Owl's house. Rabbit's house and garden. Except for Eeyore. Because he finally did it. I shall visit. Piglet. And before I get there, I'll do a long neon wee on his house. Piglet's house just puts you in a painting minigame, and I'm not joking when I say this, but the first canvas I was given was of the fed up poo meme. Even back in 1999, <laughs> they knew. So let's get painting. I call this one the sepsis bear. I call oh, this one the punished glutton. I call this one the honey is not fresh, mother. I call this one, oh demon. Where did the sky go? Do you think when Piglet grows up, he'll be called Pig? Next up, we're going to see Owl, and all we need to do is match up the pick. Katie asks very, very reasonable questions, like very, very uh, thoughtful life questions. I don't think about that now. Kind of tap, exactly kind of flat it. This picture is already where it should be. What are you talking about? They aren't the same. He's down here. Why are you wrong? You're corrupting our youth. Seeker's house is next, where we have to choose an instrument to put into a machine that plays the instrument. And that's all you do. Here's what I came up with. <laughs> Off to see Rabbit next, and hopefully he's sober this time. <laughs> you couldn't possibly help me. I mean, really. Well, screw you, asshole. I'm leaving. Would you help me can these... Nah, nah, no. no. You don't get to do that. You lost your chance two minutes ago, Rabbi. Piss off to Watership Down and get shot. <laughs> so let's head off to Pooh's house next. I walk in the front door, and I end up in Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> All we need to do is finish the stories with the correct start, middles, or endings. There once was a strawberry. Christopher Robin ate the strawberry. And then, the sun liked Christopher Robin. There once was an egg. The egg started to hatch. An 
out popped a killer bee. A tree was dead. It began to rain. And it turned into a loaf of bread. <laughs> yep, I'm done here. Let's check out Kanga's house instead. Ru and I were just making some alphabet soup. Perhaps our friend can help with the helping too. Please stop looking at me. <laughs> no. See these missing letters here? We've got to find them. That's it. That's the best alphabet soup I ever saw. Are you mentally ill? Your mother's <laughs> soup has an entire block of cheese, tofu, a cube of human flesh, a dropping from rabbit, and a cigar in it. So with that, let's end things off with the final area, Eeyore's birthday party. And that's all he deserves. Either way, I am done with these kinds of games for a long time. I already did an entire video about baby games. And I do not wish to live through any of that ever again. The games for babies, what do you expect? Who wants to sit there all on their own playing boring and easy baby games when you can sit there all on your own and watch Bear in the Big Blue Waffle? As such, 102 Dalmatians on the PlayStation, because 101 children wasn't enough and they just had to push one more out. And before mm -hmm. anything else happens, we need to address the elephant in the room. Yes. This is the most revolting thing I've ever seen in my life. Is that yes. Cruella Deville or Michael Jackson? Now I don't... <laughs> Oh my gosh. Can you will you jump out the window so I can close it, please? Oh my gosh. I'm not mad. <laughs> oh. Don't mind too much because Sweet I really chaos. like the disc at least. It's really cute. It's almost like I cut off a slice of a cow and stuck it in the PS2. This menu though, no, I don't like this at all. All of these spots forming in the background make me feel like I'm coming down with bronchitis. Hey Domino, what's this? I found a Skeletor action figure. Ruined the ah, oh my good god of grapes. I was wrong. That's not Michael Jackson. It's the Tin Man. Cruella <laughs> looks absolutely hope. Why is she purple? Vixen, that's not purple, it's grey. As a purple tint. Right, her her cheekbones are sharp. She could stab someone with her cheeks. My gosh. Oh, that's okay. Horrendous. Why does she have the head shape of a can of beans? Oh, look, dipstick. What did you just call me? <laughs> Coming on the TV right now. What is my dipstick? What can we do, darling? I'll tell you what we can do. I'll grab Cruella and shove her in my triangular whistle hole. The voice acting in this cutscene, I mean, it's perfect. It can't be improved. Not even Barry Wilton can make it better. Just listen to how the TV news reporter is cut off to carry on the story. Scotland Yard is now on the case and... <gasps> I just can't believe it. I haven't seen a story told this well since the last season of Slot. My favorite bit, though, is right here when Pongo realizes that Cruella is stealing puppies again. And there's an amazing dramatic zoom into his wife. It's that horrid Cruella de Vil up to her old tricks. Would you believe that 102 Dalmatians is a Spyro clone? Because it is. Look at it. You run around, jump around, collect items, bark at enemies like breathing fire. It's Spyro. Granted, it's Spyro for five-year-olds, so it is painfully easy. I mean, just look at these enemies here. Nemesis missed leg day. You even need to find a set amount of valuable items to unlock more areas. But instead of orbs or dragon eggs, it's your siblings. You're welcome, prick. This game does have a very special feature in it, though, and it's known as the Vom Camera, so named because whenever you move, it makes you Vom. Not only does it follow every single move you do like a cult, including flying as close behind you as possible whenever you jump or fall, but it also can't be adjusted upwards or downwards, only left and right. So I hope you enjoy Secret Diaries of an Upskirt Dog Photographer, and don't you even dare think about switching puppies. Just look at this. Who thought this was a good idea? It's giving me bile duct leakage. In fact, no. I changed my mind. This is the best idea I've ever seen. I think every single game used to make you throw up in the side of a shop window every time you change your mind. I mean, who needs $400 VR when you can spend as little as $20 to turn your PS1 from gray to beige with your own mouth? Something here that did make me laugh, though, is the destruction of these toy enemies. I don't know why, but they make the most violent sound in the whole game, and the toys themselves fire off into the distance like the Hindenburg. <laughs> I don't know why, it tickles me. All of a sudden, we're sucked into a giant logo. Okay. And then we're greeted with this thing. Hey. <laughs> All I know is hate. I am Sergeant Tibbs. Then we get inside this toy factory, and lo and behold, now the camera is too far up. I couldn't handle it anymore when I got to Cruella Deville Pinball. That's a sentence I never thought I'd say. Because all that happens is you get bounced around all of Cruella's bouncy lumps. Forever and ever, you can never stop. 
uh, no one knows when you go or where you go or where are you going or when you stop. Who, who knows where you're going? I don't know where you're going. It, it doesn't matter. You can't get out. Just oh, that's Cheshire Cat. Anymore. From staring up inside the gallbladder of a puppy to the spinning character switching to the Cruella pinball bouncing, I think I'm gonna spew. Just stop everything right now. Oh, look. The game is paused. paused. <laughs> so let's move on to the game based on the sequel, 101 Dalmatians 2. Wait, where did the other Dalmatians go? Did they get hungry? 101 Dalmatians, 101 Dalmatians 2, 102 Dalmatians, which should really be 101 Dalmatians 3, 102 Dalmatians 2, which should either be 103 Dalmatians or 101 Dalmatians 4. Okay, what are you doing? Waterboarding. <laughs> so yeah, 101 Dalmatians 2, or as it's more commonly known, Dalmatina Alf Kleinen. Fart is another US <laughs> exclusive PS1 game, believe it or not. Stop, really? It's even more confusing when you consider the subtitle of this game is Patches London Adventure, but London never got it. And that's because the Queen didn't like PlayStation since she could never beat Devil in Tekken 2. I mean... <laughs> Behold one and all, the magic of 2003 PS1 games. Still images with absolutely no voice acting. Can you believe that this game already loses to Dalmatians 3. In this game, you control Patch, first name Nicotine, in a 2.5D <laughs> platformer, but you have a sniffing button. Oh, and every time you sniff, something comes out of the top of Patch's head. I think it's the parasite that's giving him that face. <laughs> this is a game where absolutely nothing happens in the first level, and then absolutely everything happens in the second. Nope, I'm not kidding. Just look at my footage for level one. You're basically just walking around while avoiding steamed dumplings dressed as policemen, and then the game suddenly turns into an isometric top-down exploration game starring a literal son of a bitch. It's like Zelda. Except you have no map, no clue where you are or where you're going because everything looks identical. Projectiles that fire at you from off screen. Hello? Copy controls that don't let you aim properly. You know what? I thought you were called Pat because of your eye. But now I know it's because your mother should have left you as a stain on the floor. And that is all I can say about 202 One Dalmatians 2 Skid Marks London Adventure. Thanks for not giving us this game, America, because you got London all wrong. People throwing shit at you for no reason at all. The streets all looking the same. The police chasing you down for no other reason than because they're bored. Real London's worse than that. And when we're fed up with the land, we drown ourselves in the sea. All thanks to The Little Mermaid 2. The Little Mermaid 1 was apparently not game-worthy enough, but the second movie was just gagging for it. Never watched it. If we were, you wouldn't be helping. I want this on my PlayStation! As you can see from my footage right now, though, this is indeed brand new, still sealed, in the original Sony PlayStation plastic wrap that it came with when it was first on the shelves. This game has not been touched, and it was the most expensive game I bought for this video because of that. And that's fine. All I've got to do is be really careful with it. I don't need to open it or anything. Hell, I can always use an emulator. <laughs> Intuitive, non-violent gameplay. Eh, my favorite. So here we are at the first loading screen, and Sebastian just looks sad and lost. I'm not feeling too confident right now. Flounder, have you seen my aerial? Yeah, I've been washing my spandex with it. Your game would be complete without the pickups. Oh, well done, game. Breaking the fourth wall. Standing ovation. Very subversive. You're just like Bubsy 3D. Aren't these game designers wonderful? Sebastian has some of my favorite lines in the whole game, though. He's so funny. Like this one. I'm organizing the royal gala for your father. Collect the coins for the fun. Did I just commit a hate crime? So the game begins, and this old slag won't let me get past without her bloody comb because she can't be asked to find it herself. Fine, whatever. I've got nothing better to do. I'll look for it myself. Mm. And what begins as a simple quest to find a comb for a woman quickly turns into a game of you needing to fix everyone's problems with everything. To start with, you've got to find a comb, but on the way, you must fix the orchestra. But in order to do that, you need to find Sebastian first. So you go to the left to see the king after finding the comb at the furthest left point of the level, and he needs to find a gold ring that's gone missing. So you go all the way back to the furthest right of the level to give the cow her comb back and then get a key for a chest in the king's room but if you try exploring further to the right a palace guard will tell you that no one is able to leave unless the king gets his special sodding ring back which means going all the way back to the furthest left point of the level to open the chest and get a magic bag which for some reason triggers sebastian to appear on the right hand side of the level and fix the orchestra oh. where we find the king's ring stuck inside a tuba meaning going back to the left of the level to give it back to him so we can swim all the way back to the furthest right end of the level in order to get past the guard why am i fixing all of your problems leave me alone i'm a pretty mermaid not a prime minister <laughs> and i'd love to say that the rest of the game improves after that obvious railroaded tutorial. It doesn't. Oh, man, it doesn't. Are you sure that non-violent gameplay was a good idea? 
In every single stage, you swim around boring and tiny levels, barely able to move anywhere, even when you should be able to, and you just find random shit lying on the floor that you collect and then use immediately on other shit that's right next to where the original shit was laying. And don't forget about the hidden items, even though they're not that hidden at all because they're usually in the same path as just making it to the end of the level. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think they cut off my feet? Plus, it's extremely hard to see where the hell you're even going because the camera is too close to Ariel's breeds. You can't make out what's just part of the background, what's a path you're allowed to go on, and even what's able to hurt you. Oh, yeah, that's fair. Thanks so much, Mrs. Vagilus. Attack me with a crab in the background that's not even touching me. Whoa, what? There's a shark. What? There's a shark that's trying to eat me. But you said there was no violence. What do you call this? Ah, ah, ah where do I go? Where do I go? I don't know. Ah, no, I got eaten. Oh, my mistake. No, we didn't. We got spat <laughs> out. Oh, 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 okay. Hi, Ursula. It's Ursula. Hello. And then the game just quits itself and boots me back to the main menu. Hey, Ariel. Do you know what my favorite meal is? Fish and chips. Right, so as it turns out, in this totally non-violent video game where you get swallowed by sharks, every single time you die, including just then, even though I clearly got spat out perfectly alive, you get immediately thrown through a loading screen to get back to the main menu, and then have to go through another loading screen to load the level up again, from scratch, without any items collected, every single time. So stop collecting anything, I'm going off to the next level. And now we're in a burning shipwreck and have a short time limit to save a drowning prince. But don't worry. No violence. And then after about 15 minutes, we're in a boss fight against Ursula. 30 seconds later, we've finished her off and we've saved the day. All thanks to the Little Mermaid with a big... Penis. So I guess that's all we get for the first movie, because now we're suddenly controlling a child. It must be Ariel's daughter, I guess. But since she is indeed a child, that means she's even slower than Ariel and can't even attack. Not only that, but she also needs air, otherwise she'll suffocate. No violence. In fact, why can't you breathe underwater? You're the daughter of a mermaid. Have you got the lungs of Wheezy? <laughs> Five seconds later, we die, and then my great aunt pops up, and then we're back at the main menu all over again. No thanks, I'm done. And, uh, and the ginger finger. Oh boy, what a funny little character. <laughs> Are you about to give me a game? How did you know? <laughs> I will be right, right back. I need you in or out, sweetheart. Thank you. Ah, I'm a man! Okay, then. <laughs> Ready? Can I have it? No, you can't. This is Walt Disney World Quest Magical Racing Tour. Possibly the worst title of a game I've ever seen, next to Golf Magazine Presents 36 Great Holes Starring Fred Couples. We've had platformers, I'm we've had sorry? Action, we've had point and clicks, and now we've got a kart racer. So maybe this one will stick out for the right reasons. Time to my language, I guess. <gasps> but I'm French! Aha, Bon Jovi. Okay, well the game doesn't start all that good. We don't have a hat. P -bit. What is going on with Chip and Dale down here? Dale looks like Nosferatu, and Chip has camel toe. Well, hello there. Frick the name. Jiminy Frick. And today, I have a tale for you. <laughs> okay, apparently Rattlesnake Dale wasn't scary enough for the kids, because now we have this overly animated, withered old peanut with a full set of human teeth. He is absolutely disgusting. Hello there. Ricketts the name. I've got Ricketts. Nice to meet you, Jiminy. And my name is... Sook. But luckily, that isn't because the game itself sucks. Far from it. It's the best I've played so far for this video. Well, most of the time. It's got everything you need for a kart racer. You've got power-ups, drifting with drift boosting, but specifically yeah. for hairpin turns. You can tap jump to make sudden sharp turns over and over again to keep your speed up. There's loads of shortcuts and alternate routes, and there's even some shortcuts that can only be activated once per lap by you needing to drive through all of these loops here and then aiming your car in the right place. Even hmm. the entire idea of the game itself is great. Okay. Its great title is Walt Disney World Quest for a reason, because all of the racetracks are based off of Disney World rides and attractions, mm. with the races themselves themselves throwing tons of nods and references to what you see in the parks and rides themselves. Pirates of the Caribbean, Space Mountain, Rock and Roller Coaster, Thunder Mountain, Haunted Mansion, most of the big ones are all here and it's really cool to race through them. Then to make it even better, after you've picked your Disney reject that nobody remembers like Otto Plugnut or 
Oliver Chickley the third. Every racetrack actually changes the vehicle you're driving to match the theme of the track that you're on. Whether you're using a train in Thunder Mountain or a rocket ship in Space Mountain, it's details like that I have a right fit over. And they even use some of the classic Disney World background music for some of these racetracks. But then you run into those kinds of issues where for every good thing you find, there's unfortunately a catch. The track designs are interesting, but you'll often get clipped to the edges of walls. The shortcuts are plentiful, but sometimes you'll break the game and be told that you're going the wrong way when you're clearly following the arrows. And then there's stuff that outright confuses me. Why would they include all of these different vehicle types, but then not give zombie Grandpa Donald and all of his friends their own stats for costs and benefits to make the races more interesting and the racers stick out more? This game also came out after CTR and Diddy Kong Racing. Would it have killed them to have a drive around hub world where you actually go and explore Disney World itself? And what about the slow? Down. Oh boy, when things get too heated, it moves along like a dying animatronic of Geppetto. The biggest problem with this game, though, is that it's just not that special. It's functional, I like the tracks, <laughs> but there's really not that much I can say about it. It's as <laughs> standard as a kiddie cart racer goes. Not much depth to it whatsoever. I mean, it's a kid's but game. Disney Story Studio Mulan, on the other hand. Now this, this is what I call a video game. Why is there a hairy circle? My name is, um, Bra. I don't know, what do you want from me? <laughs> this is a game from the animated storybook series of Disney games. Interactive moving slideshows that retell the Disney movie that you picked and that allows you to mess around with each chapter as you go on with mini games and pointing and clicking on Pumbas. 24 odd years ago, I actually had one of these on my old... I did too. Mine was, mine was, um, Lion King. I love that. I adored this game. And for a point and click that just tells you the story of the movie, it does its job extremely well, with minimal mental scars. I also had my eye on that lady's dalmatian. The only one of these games that made the leap from PC to PS1, though, was... Mullen. Water Mullen. <laughs> does that mean that this was the best one, and that they needed to put it on as many platforms as possible? I have a pair of leggings. What do you think? To be fair though, this is just exactly the same as the other ones available on the PC. It's a retelling of Disney's Mulan, except you make it move along, choose your own words for the story like Summon, Challenge, Dare. Play a mini game every so often, and click around on absolutely everything to see what happens. You can slap a skinny man, you can make a cat wet, you can scroll through a few words at a million miles an hour. You can dress up Mulan to make her look like a homeless woman in a towel, you can make Mushu laugh. <laughs> but don't make Mushu laugh, you can start a snowball fight, and you can even send off an endless supply of prearranged wives off to a miserable future. Seriously, this never stops. Where are all these women coming from? Family. Family, where you kiss your mum and your dad. But we wish Granny would just die already. Mulan arrived at the army camp. She had trouble fitting in with the other soldiers. Well, I bet they didn't have any trouble fitting in her. I'm busy. I need an apple for serenity for Mulan. Okay, no sweat. A please would be nice, but I don't want you to break my nose, so I'll go and get it for you. No, it's the green apple I need. Jesus, sorry. I want you to get a pendant for balance for Mulan. Aha, gotcha. Easy peasy. No, I need the purple and yellow pendants. Uh... Stay big, bring them to me after you've found them. Now, step. Fine, I'm on it. No, no, I... Oh, shut up, you smelly old bat. You know I'd be able to do all of this if you told me what you actually wanted first. Don't blame me for guessing, and stop staring at me like a bulldog chewing on a rock. I need to take it back and get dressed. So why don't you? Do you need help? The matchmaker awaits you. Yes, dressmaker. I cannot wait to get dressed before taking a bath in my new dress. I hope I make a beautiful bride. Well, you better quickly give birth to one then. The most important thing to me, though, is that they even included the best Disney song of all time. Be a minge. I mean, do you want an yes. animated interactive storybook of Disney's Mulan? Then play the animated interactive storybook of Disney's Mulan. It does what it says on the tin, so leave me alone. Mm. I think I know how to do this now. Yes, so do I. Have a brush. Oh, Hello. there's someone at the door, Gromit. I wonder who that could be. Hello. Oh my god, it's Chris Chan. I'm Goku. Wow, the real one from Disney? It's only a matter of time. What are you doing here, you old bastard? Kami Hi, Kaka. <laughs> I can smell Atlantis the Lost Empire in there. <gasps>
Is it really a game? The movie Atlantis they had a game? Good and has good characters. Yep. Yeah. What a perfect film to base a video game on. So how do you turn the most forgettable, unvideo gamey movie of But it was such a good movie. It's so underrated and I hate that it's so underrated because it's such a good movie. All time into a video game. Let's find out right now by going to the special features. I'm going. The game starts up and we're forced into an extremely basic tutorial. And when I say basic... I'm sorry? Very good. I really mean basic. We're playing Simon Says with an old man. Hey, can you jump like me? <laughs> hey there, young man. Do you remember how to look? This is how you look. And unfortunately, the main game doesn't get any less basic. This here is an explorative adventure game with collectathon elements and swapping characters around to do certain tasks because stronger characters like Vinny and Milo can push objects. Women can't push things. You know what this reminds me of? Milo's Resident strong? Evil, Excuse me? Donkey Kong 64. It feels like Resident Evil with all the item collecting, examining, manually combining things together in the inventory, and then manually using them on the right objects in the environment directly from your inventory without it happening automatically. That's stuff I can appreciate. But it feels like Donkey Kong 64 with the sheer amount of backtracking and character swapping in order to get back to one particular obstacle that one character can clear, carrying on a little bit, finding another obstacle that another character has to interact with, so backtracking to another character swap station, passing that original obstruction, then getting blocked again later on in the level, going back to a character swap station and repeating oh it. Oh my gosh. And all of this is annoying enough, but it starts to affect just basic moving along too, because some of the characters that should be able to do some things can't do them in specific situations when they can every other time. So the game has been designed to make me second guess absolutely everything I do. Have I got the wrong character for this situation? Is it even possible to do this with any character? Or is the game just a whiff? Some wooden crates can be blown up, but some can't. Some grabbing platforming can be done with one character, but some can't. Sometimes you have chronic heart pain, but sometimes you don't. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you don't. Okay. Okay. Not only that, but some character-specific items need to be interacted with by standing in a very specific area of the item that you're trying to interact with. And not only would you need to figure out that location to begin with by just pressing action all over the place until you get a message, but then you need to make sure you've got the right character equipped to interact with it, meaning more backtracking to a character switching station and then heading back again. And that's even if the characters are available, because most of the time, they can't be accessed from that particular station. And you've got to go even further back to find oh the right station to switch gosh, out. Other no. than that, though, there's not much to say. Just like the movie. It looks fine, it's not absolutely terrible, but it won't make me keep my hands below the blanket. Ugh, come on! Can't we get a good game for a change? Is that too much to ask? How about this one? Oh, why? Because the Empress New Group is the funniest little movie, so the game might be just as good. Yeah, yes, oh. I, yeah, right. I agree. Hey, thanks, honey. You know what? My girlfriend and me couldn't be any more on the same wavelength, I swear. We know each other so well that we even finish each other's... What? Now, like I said, I've never played this game before until now. But as far Empress as these Negro. Negro's one games go, whenever you bring them up in casual conversation, don't worry, we've all been there. I have heard that this one is apparently one of the better ones, Ooh. which I wouldn't be able to tell from the menu screen because what is that? And why is there a faceless Wideman? Oh, actually, I can see his face. He left it on the roof, and perhaps that face should have stayed there because, <laughs> oh lord, his face came back and I am not happy with any of it. What is with these mouth animations? It looks like he's chewing on Gandhi's sandal. But let's get down to brass tacks. Ow. Is this game as good as everyone remembers it being? Oh, no, I never played it. Yes. I was pleasantly surprised by this one, I will be honest. I couldn't tell you why the hell they decided to make a comedy road trip movie into a video game and do it relatively well, but somehow those crazy bastards did it. It's another Spyro clone like the Dalmatians game, but it's way better designed. It looks better, it feels better, there's more ways to move, more ways to unlock collectibles, more mm. tense and interesting platforming. Mm -hmm. Sure, it's more linear and a little less explorative, but for a game about controlling a llama, you can do a lot worse. Use your look button to see the red idol on top of the statue. I would love to, little boy, but I'm a bit too confused by you. You've got the feet of hair combs and the body of a seal. And just like the movie, the game is pretty funny sometimes. You've broken my toy llama again. Oh no. Bad llama. Bad 
Just don't charge around by the tree, okay? I mean, check out that walking animation. It's so oh, good. How to now four. There's also the timed obstacle challenges while you charge, sliding races, aiming and shooting games, but with spit. What is it with Disney and Fled? There's even a stealth segment <laughs> where you need to keep moving forward while hiding behind obstacles every time your target decides to turn around. I'm a secret agent. But this lady, though, woof, what happened to her? What's her name? Um, Yzma. Eczma? Yeah, Eczma. She looks pretty bad. She's so filthy, even her breast milk has expired. You know what else expired? The dinosaurs. The box isn't lying. The game is called Dinosaur, and there are dinosaurs. Dinosaur, dinosaur, uh, monkey. And before we get to the actual game, I really do just need to bring attention to the worst piece of shit picture of a dinosaur I've ever seen in my life on the back of this box. What, what is up with this? Did their printer break? <laughs> Ooh, look, big grub. I love big grub. Enough joshing though. Let's sit down and play some. No, keep dinosaur. joshing, please. Or we could open up the encyclopedia instead. Yes, I've always wanted to play a game to study. And would you look at that? How interesting is this? It's so interesting, in fact, that the game couldn't handle itself and broke. The information text randomly disappeared entirely. And now I can't quit this mode and go back to the main menu. All I can do now is scroll through a load of depressing, lonely dinosaurs with no friends. And I'm not surprised. Who'd want to be friends with that? Eventually, though, the game completely stopped reading my inputs altogether. And now I'm stuck staring at lemurs having a shit in the woods. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cause I'm supposed to wipe it off, but sure. Oh well. At least we get to see Big Grub again. And here is the game. Okay. Where the hell do I start? The game opens up with a 35 second scene of a pterodactyl flying over an island and nothing else happens. You can't control it, you can't skip it, you just have to sit there and love it. That over raptor is attacking the nest. Well then you better go and save it with your swoop attack. And I don't need to explain anything that's wrong with it. You can just watch the whole process yourself. <laughs> We save the egg and put it down safely on another part of the island. Run! At which point it immediately hatches, and this is where it begins to never shut up. <coughs> At which point you're suddenly controlling a monkey, and he likes to make this noise every single time he attacks. <coughs> but you can't do that for too long, because after a few seconds you get another... <coughs> so off we go to find some fruit hanging in specific trees. <coughs> and while I'm doing this, no less than three times in a row, the game decides to throw the crying little mistake at me. Which is very annoying, don't get me wrong, but at least it isn't as bad as... <coughs> Look at how slow we're moving here, and we can't go any faster. In a game about looking around a giant island for things, isn't this fun? Oh look, an enemy! Time to attack it! <coughs> Great, so I've been doing it all throughout the game so far, and when I finally need to actually use it, it doesn't work. Oh dear. And that's great, because what I was looking for isn't even here, so I better move off back to the left. Oh damn! Oh damn! Another fossil! Attack! Attack! Die! What? No. Run, die. Let's start again, then. I'll have a look. Nope. Nope. This is the same 35 second intro with no way to skip it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Okay, no, I'm done with this defecation. Right, now. I mean, I mean. It has to be good. Surely there can't be any more half baked doughy splats of Disney games on PS1. Surely there has to be a classic out there that's hiding. But... Ow. Mickey's Wild Adventure. Hey, I remember this. Did you guys ever play Mickey Mania on the Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis? It was a 2D Mickey Mouse platformer from 1994, and two years later, in 1996, it got an enhanced PlayStation version with much better music and prettier graphics. I never played the original, but this version in particular I remember borrowing from my cousin many times. Just this box art alone is making me revert back to a kid again. My brother, my brother played the, box, the original. This game is so confident that it doesn't even list any features on the back of it, or mention that it's a remaster. It's that full of itself that it thinks it can sell you on the screenshots alone. I mean... And to be totally fair to it, yep, it deserves to sell itself on the still images and nothing else because this is easily one of my favourite looking PS1 games of all time. The whole mm -hmm. concept of the game is that you control modern Mickey Mouse travelling through a handful of his classic cartoon history to help out his past self and then moving on to the next cartoon. And it's a concept they do not skimp out on. From the Steamboat Willie stage gradually changing from black and white to colour the further you get to the 
Bass. Fighting in the background of moose hunters, it just fires on all cylinders from the second you start. The pixel art and animation is delightful, and the way it uses the PS1's power to mix 3D objects into the hand drawn style looks really good as well. It's really like they're trying to bridge the gap between a traditional 2D animation and 3D video game and make it seem as though the game aspects are breaking through the cinema. What was going on? Past Mickey shit for modern Mickey to help him out with, and it never feels gimmicky. This is PS1 2.5D done perfectly. The game is really simple to play too. All you do is run, jump, duck, and collect marbles to throw. If you have any marbles that Mickey didn't lose himself after being married to this whore. So compensating for the easy controls, I suppose, they decided to make the game brutal. I mean, God, you start noticing things even on the first stage, Steamboat Willie. And it's nothing to be ashamed of. The platforms are often never quite low enough for you to make jumps. Whoa. You can't throw marbles one after each other Whoa. that quickly, and even if you do manage to fire off two pretty quickly, the second hit usually doesn't Whoa. count against an enemy, and things will attack you from off screen Whoa. all the time. Yeah. However, all in all, it's pretty easy. But after that comes stage two, the Mad Doctor. And Mad is certainly right, because this is where the game switches things into asshole gear. It begins immediately with bats that you don't have much time to react to if you don't already know they're coming. Then there's these skeletons that hurt you enough on their own, but also explode on death into multiple bones, a few of which can hurt you, and they blast off into random directions that are impossible to predict or work around based on what else the level is asking you to do, so they will inevitably hit you like boobs. Then there's more bats that suddenly appear from off screen like boobs. And an extremely fast minecart riding section that gives you barely enough time to react to saw blades like Oops. and don't forget you need to jump to attack flying enemies that are coming towards you but if you do jump next to a rope you'll automatically grab the rope and fly yourself all over the damn place often back into other danger like Oops. I lost all three lives that I had on stage two and I couldn't figure out how to earn any more the game is really stingy with health too and that's not a huge deal but you can only take four hits which massively becomes a problem when you get to stage three mm -hmm. moose hunters because look at all the shit falling from the sky here all the while you need to dodge off screen mooses. Following this is a chase sequence where there's a ton of obstacles, a turn that's slower than a recycling truck, and a jump like you're on bloody Saturn. And after that, it just keeps going. Stage four, the lonesome ghosts, picky jump collision detection, a tiny field of vision in the dark, absolutely unavoidable damage, enemies you can't even kill, even though these ghosts are already dead, but you know what I mean. Projectiles flying at you from off screen, and it doesn't stop there. Stage five, Mickey and the Beanstalk, where there are butterflies that are nearly impossible to hit, and dragonflies that take up half the damn screen and appear from nowhere while you're platforming across sinking leaves. And if you get a game over, you begin the entire stage all over again, which means, for an example, on stage two, if you lose all of your lives at the last boss level, you need to redo all of the eight mini stages that make up that single stage all over again. Look at how I'm playing. Playing here, this overly cautious tippy tapping. It's not a fun way to play a tricky platformer, and most of the time that didn't even really help me. Mickey, get up there, you stupid bratwurst! Plus, the game itself, in its box and everything, was not one of the cheaper ones to find on eBay, so mm -hmm. save your money. Right, now, what have we got? Caddy, did you just hit me with this Mickey Mouse disc? Oh, wow, everyone, look! It's Lus Mark. That's L S Mark. Shut up! You're not real. Okay, well I may not be real, but this is Goofy's Funhouse. <laughs> I like the smug look. It's beautiful. More like Goofy's Funhouse. First off, I really appreciate them clarifying that this is Disney's Goofy we're talking about, and not. A Serbian film's goofy. This here's my very own home entertainment room. You know, where I watch all my favorite home movies. What kind of home movies do you film? And here is the game. Check out this frame rate. Oh boy, is this good. <laughs> oh, don't worry about that. I just like to skin live bears. <laughs> so yes, welcome everybody to Goofy's Fun House, where everything you touch, you make noises from hell happen. Essentially, this is a 3D point-and-click adventure game where you find items, put them in other items, your mouse cursor is this gangly moron, you move Goofy around this slow even when he's running, and half the stuff you click on nearly kills him. I sure do have a lot of books. It's just a shame I can't read. <laughs> then you eventually find a load of mini-games that you need <laughs> Don't to do that to my favorite Disney character. And put them in other items. Yes! 
I did a win-win. You know what? The name of this <laughs> game is incorrect. This is definitely not Goofy's Fun House. It's Goofy's Hell House. There's fish and peas on the kitchen table smoking a cigarette, urine in the blender, posters of steroid abuse in his son's bedroom, the walls are made of cheese, the garden is made of anus, Pluto has one singular giant eye, there's crying mannequins, ghosts, and skeletons in the attic. <laughs> You're kind of and Goofy himself climbs the stairs like a molester before entering a single door at the top of the stairs that then opens up to a room with an impossible door that suddenly appears with demon magic, which if it was there before should lead him out of thin air, but instead ends up in a bedroom. This is the scariest game I've ever played and I wanted to stop. Burr. <laughs> How does it go? Burr. 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 <laughs> We've been entered into a phone quiz. Oh, a phone quiz. How fan. Where do you wear a golfing hat? Easy. Legs. How dare you? What do you hit a golf ball with? Easy. Golf cart. How dare you? What room in a house is for sleeping in? Easy. The bathroom. <laughs> well, you've clearly never had a heavy night before. Even though you definitely have. Goofy referencing Nintendo. Bowser. You know what? Max isn't home, so I want to snoop around my son's bedroom. Nothing will go wrong there. Oh, Maxie secret videos. Better take them with me and bash one out. <laughs> I will say, though, that after all of this nonsense, you're actually rewarded with full-length classic Goofy short films. There's six of them on the disc, actually. <laughs> and I've got to admit, that's the best thing in the game. This is a really good reward. Now, where's that bump? Mickey gave me for my birthday. I need it right now. I want to make it bigger. <laughs> and I don't know why, but I oddly got into this one. Yeah, I enjoyed it. It's fun. Does that make me a psychopath? Probably. In which case, I'm the perfect target audience for Tigger's treasure hunt. There's a party, <laughs> but there's no honey, and we need to find more honey to quench this lumped, insatiable hunger. So Tigger heads off to get the honey. Guess it's time to rock it up to space and die then. It's all very simple, and the name of the game tells you all you need to know. It is Tigger's Honey Hunt. Featuring Winnie the Fecal Matter. First off, I really do like this old storybook setup. It's just like it is in the movies. And to give credit for a 2000. I never watched the movies it or the show. I read the books. I even really like those pre rendered backgrounds that emulate the sketchy hand drawn style of the original movie. It's cute. And what a nice game this is. You move left and right, jump and duck. That's it. It's so friendly. You explore side scrolling levels and find items for your friends. That's all you do. <laughs> Tiggers like being the top. You can't even attack enemies that hurt you back because in Winnie the Pooh, we don't confront our problems, we run from them. The odd thing, though, is that despite all of that, this is actually a decent platformer. Specifically for toddlers, I'm aware, but there's a lot more care put into this than your average baby game. Like I just said, there are enemies as well as plenty of hazards with timings to learn. There's a lot of obstacles to platform around, many of the levels branch off into different pathways and non-linear extra areas. You need to explore these areas to find enough honey pots in order to unlock the next levels, and there's even unlockable new abilities to make the platforming more interesting. I had no clue what to expect going into this game, but it sure wasn't any of this. Blah! Tigger of don't like foot fetish. I mean, I can't be horrible about it because the game isn't horrible. It's not trying to be anything massive. It's just trying to give your kids a nice relaxing side scroller with a bit of challenge and good controls. I don't know what else to say. <gasps> Tigger is the next Tekken fighter. I'm trying to open this door, but it's not moving. Okay then, Rue, let's see what I can do to help. Oh, bloody hell! Oh, hello everyone. Sorry, I got bored. You just caught me in the middle of watching the classic rom-com, Four Weddings and a Funnel. But is it as classic as the movie that our next game is based on? Treasure Planet? Yeah, you heard me. Treasure Planet is a classic. It's a great movie. You don't I think know what I've you're seen talking it. about. You're wrong. And that's okay. Not everybody can be right. I did hear through the grapevine, though, that this was also a decent game from people's childhoods. Okay. I mean, you guys no, I did see about this. The yes. new brew, so I'm excited. Let's pop it in and have a go with Treasure Plane. It. Oh boy, this is really cool. Look at this. My copy that I found online actually came with the original sticker set completely untouched. Oh and wow. And a mini PS1 catalog for all the new games at the time. This takes me right back. It is so sweet. Oh damn, I need to get this portable LCD screen. I've always wanted one and I really should do a video on PS1 accessories at some point. But that's not for now, the game is. And my controversial opinion on this 20 year old disc that none of you should really care about anymore is... It is fine. It is the most fine game I think I've ever played on the PS1. You run around open-ended linear areas, do a platform, swing a stick, shoot a bang bang, collect Cheerios, spend collected money for more areas. It's absolutely nothing special. It's totally fine, 
I just genuinely don't know what else to say. It's as standard as they possibly come. Welcome to the interstellar union of miners. Uh... Speaking of miners, I'm pretty sure this guy likes them. Yep, we're looking at Peter Pan now, if you couldn't tell, and his very own video game, Adventures in Neverland, starring Peter Pancreas. Now, even though I really do love the movie, Peter himself, I've always found... Never watched the movie. He is the most uncomfortable main characters of all time. He's the boy who never grew up. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure that was just the legal defense of Gary Glitter. And this oh my gosh. extends from the movie to all over this case and the manual inside it. Firstly, it's entirely written in comic sand. Secondly, in the list of Peter's friends, he lists himself. And thirdly, this memory card is useful for saving lost boys. Me no likey pan. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Nice to meet you. My name is Gash. <laughs> Huge treasure Hello? Neverland? Yes, Peter, didn't you know? Here's a fun fact for you today. In order to actually start playing this game, you need to sit through the intro company animations, a loading screen, hit start to then enter another loading screen, enter your name, watch a cutscene, enter another loading screen, go to a level select menu, pick your level, and then enter another loading screen. Why is this taking so long? Come on, do something, pedo pan! Oh, okay, I take it back. Now I wish you didn't do anything. This is not a good game, Pete. It's a side-scroller, except you can fly, which sounds great, but in this game, all that means is fill every level with absolutely nothing because who cares, you'll just fly above it anyway. It's one of the emptiest games I've ever played. What's the point in flying if there's nothing to fly around? At that point, you're just moving a mouse cursor on a black screen. It's the best game in game. There's no platforming, there's too much space in between hazards. It's just a load of nothing. Even the secret areas are just on your way to your next checkpoint. Hey, you wanna know the best place to put a secret area? right next to another secret area and the first level loves telling you over and over again whoops you can't go there yet whoops you can't go there yet whoops you can't go there well at least that isn't as irritating as the amount of loading screens in this game there's a loading screen for everything there's a loading screen when you start a level a loading screen for beating a level a loading screen for getting back to the menu these can all last up to 20 seconds every single time by the way and considering Ouch. most of these stages last no longer than a minute or two you're spending more time looking at peter having a wii than actually playing the game he's on the damn cover He's the boy who never grew up when he must have done at some point because kids don't like sitting around doing nothing for 20 seconds every one minute. Ah! Here is the combat. <laughs> there was the combat. Sometimes you also control Tinkerbell, and do you know what you do there? Fly? Look up her skirt. No, you fly around in a side scroller again, except now you only press one button to control her altitude, while once again, nothing else happens. Wait a second, what's this here? Oh. 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 Are we going to the Indian shop to buy Indians? What is this? 1840? This game has made me so upset that I could listen to James Blunt. <laughs> Okay, what's next? <laughs> Who is there? Yes, it is me. I bloody knew it. Bloody Walter. Yes, and I want you to make awful sequels to my classic films for 50 years after I die. But you're already dead. Oops. Well, then you'd better get on with it then. <laughs> How? Peter Pan in Return to Neverland. He went back! Yes, we've got another US exclusive, so if we didn't get it over here, we must have been really offended by it. Maybe Peter finally touched them. It's... it's the same game. Is Are it? you shitting me? It's the same game. <laughs> no, it's literally the same exact game. Yes, it's the same game as the one I just played, but from another country. It's the same game, but with a burger and a cowboy hat! I just wasted my money. I paid import tax on this! Okay, I'm so sorry. For a game, called Return to Neverland, when in the country the game came from, he never bloody went there in the first place! Oh, check it out, it's a boss fight. You think you can beat me? Yes, I think I can. I need to wash the taste of that out of my mouth. So how about we close things up? <clears throat> Disney's magical Tetris challenge. This is basically if Capcom made a Tetris battling game, but with Disney characters. What you see here is what you get. And you know what? 
It kind of rules. It's nothing more than Tetris battling, either with a second player or with a short single player story mode, but these battles will test you. They can get surprisingly difficult. It's tense, it controls well, the music slaps, it looks great. I'm happy I picked this one up. The story mode is really weird though, since you have to go through it by helping all of your friends with certain jobs, and the only way that you can help them finish their jobs is by beating them? Hey Donald, thanks for helping me out by kicking my ass! Well that was an anticlimactic way to end. Hmm. Nowhere near good enough. So how about we end this video properly properly? Ah, uh, proper. With Dance Dance Revolution Disney Mix. Yes! Oh hey! I regret every decision I've ever made in my life. Once again, we've got another game Aww. that explains itself better than I ever could. It's DDR, but with Disney songs. Have you played DDR? Have mm -hmm. you played Disney songs? Mm -hmm. You've already played DDR Disney Mix. It's DDR Disney Disney Right. The only thing I guess I need to make clear is that Dance Dance Revolution used to be called Dancing Stage in the UK all those years ago, but that is about the most complicated thing I will be saying about this game today. It's made by Konami, it looks like DDR, and that is because it's DDR. Hello Caddy, it's me Baby Yoda from Disney's Star Wars The Mandalorian registered trademark now available on Disney+. Plus. Oh, how cute! Hello, you're looking very marketable today. Take my dance mat so that you can look ha ha funny wunny when you play this game. No! If you don't use it, I will skin your cat and wear it. I mean, yes! We e e e e e. Kenny, I can't see your face. Like grandma. If you think you're interested in this, then all you need to do is ask yourself, have you ever wanted to play techno dance remixes of supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? Yes. Doodah, zippity day. Yes. Chim chimini chim chimini chim chim chiri, but with your feet. If so, then this will be your favorite game of all time. And if you want, you can even play it on the Thrustmaster. What's that? You're not interested in any of these songs? Well, how about It's a Small World? Oh God, no. Ducking hardcore mix. <laughs> I ended up playing this game so much that I actually got AAA rankings on most of the songs too. And yes, I'm gonna gloat about that. I really enjoyed this game. It goes way harder than I ever could have expected, and I love it. Well done for closing things off on a good note, Dancing Stage Disney Mix, or as it's known in Japan, Disney's Ray! In conclusion, Disney have some good PS1 games, and Disney have some bad PS1 games. In a few in the middle. Of the time, the movies are way better. So why would I bother wasting any more time playing worse versions of the movies when I can actually sit here and watch the movies and keep my hands free? But please subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter because you haven't been very good today, and I'm giving you a chance to redeem yourself. Special thank you to all um, the executive producers on my page. How, how did you know? Lucifer thirteen oh seven, Starman stuff. How did you know I was a? I was a. I was a, I was a girl. A certain girl. <laughs> Thank you again, Tana, uh, Tana Majors, for requesting this video. This was a lot of fun. And until next time, loves. Ta ta. Take care.